So first we will see what are the armamentarium needed. Okay. One is suture needle. Okay. Only used is silk. And what you need is a needle holder and tissue forceps or tooth forceps. Okay. Then we need some scissor to cut the suturing thread. So instruments you should know how to handle it. Okay, so this is a needle holder. So any instruments they are an extension of our fingers. So it should be around six inches. Then only you can use it inside the oral cavity. Okay, comfortably. So till here it is six inches. So any instrument if you take, it will be six. Inches. So how to hold the needle holder? Okay, thumb in one finger. There are two ways we can hold the needle holder. One is thumb in one finger and the middle finger in another ring and one finger here this is the hinge okay below the hinge one finger okay so this is one method but the most favorable method is thumb in one finger this finger mm. uh, in one finger and this finger here and this finger here okay like this okay so thumb in one finger this finger here little finger is free and the index finger below the hinge okay so you get a three point support one support here one support here one support here additionally one support here okay important thing is this ring should not go beyond this joint okay if it goes beyond the joint then it is difficult to uh, release the finger okay so the key is using this using the needle holder with the ring within this space this should not go here okay within this space okay here okay and how to hold the needle with the needle holder so don't hold too close to the eye this is called the eye this is called the tip of the needle this is the eye of the needle this is the body of the needle so don't go close to the eye otherwise the needle will bend okay don't go very close to the tip you cannot insert it you cannot use it so in the middle or little bit towards the eye okay and don't hold here don't hold here hold near the tip as much as possible near the tip of the needle hold hold okay and another thing don't hold in a vertical direction okay hold the tip should be slightly away from your body okay like this okay so not like this slightly the tip should be away from your body don't hold like this the tip is towards your body so in the needle this increases the access okay especially when you are suturing in the lower eight region or upper eight region keep like this okay got the point so this is tissue holder hold it in the left hand to hold the tissue to take the bite to hold the tissue to take the bite okay there are a lot of suturing techniques okay simple interrupted continuous figure of eight only one technique is more than sufficient to handle most of the situation more than 98 percent of the situation in minor oral surgery can manage successfully manage with knowing only about simple interrupted suturing so today we will learn how to do the simple interrupt okay the first thing is you need a good assistant for suctioning and for retraction so you need a assistant without assistant uh, it will be difficult to do the suturing so you need a good so the assistant job is to do two things one is good retraction the second thing is okay. to keep the area no clean without any saliva or blood adequate suctioning so these are the two prerequisites for before suturing 
good retraction and good visibility that means good suctioning okay then you see the wound okay so before suturing you have to clean the area okay if it is a socket clean it because after suturing you cannot clean it okay so before suturing see the socket any bone chips any enamel chips any filling materials any granulation tissue you have to clean it because after suturing you cannot go and see the socket so before suturing check the socket usually okay for any foreign bodies then check the bone margins if there is any sharpness do mild alveolar plasty smoothen it because after suturing you cannot smoothen the bone margins the third thing is trim the tissue if necessary trim the gingival flap if necessary any excess tissue if you want to trim you can trim so before suturing you have to check three things intra orally one is check the socket for cleanliness the second thing is check the bone for sharpness roughness third thing is the gingival tissue. tissue so any excess tissue if you want to remove any tissue which has got tear you can trim it with a bp blade or with a sharp scissor okay so these are the three things you should check before suturing. starting the suturing so once you are happy with these three things you can start suturing okay so hold the tissue with tissue forceps this is optional okay once you get experience you may not need this in many of the situation so hold the tissue okay so how to enter the tissue with the needle okay don't enter like this okay so i am entering in a slanting angle to the tissue so this is the tissue surface i am entering in a so this is a common mistake we will be doing okay going like this so instead of going like this you have to start from the needle should be, the tip should enter the tissue at right angle like this and then you can turn so now you see it is entering at 90 degree okay so the relation between the needle tip and the tissue surface should be 90 degree when it is entering so enter okay then what you do is see my wrist the wrist should rotate okay like this some people will do like this okay okay to enter so just go and reach the tip then see my wrist like this like why i am rotating because the needle shape is circle If the needle is a straight needle you can do like this how they stitch in home no but we are not using any straight needle it is a curved needle so our movement should be in a curved manner so rotate the wrist you will get a good bite so take bite on one side either buccal or lingual so there is nothing like you should start from buccal you should start from lingual even from any direction whichever is convenient you can start start from lingual and take the bite at the same time of the buccal this is one option okay otherwise take a bite separately come out through the wound then take the bite there is no incision here so we are taking the bite at the same time okay so here the flap will be you no know, flabby it may escape your bite so hold the that is how you are using this tissue holding process hold the tissue then take the bite okay so when you are removing the tissue from suture needle from the tissue don't pull like this if it is straight needle you can pull what you have to do is like this rotate the wrist so while entering the movement is rotation while exiting the movement is rotation if you pull in a straight line it will tear the tissue will tear so rotate and keep it on the left hand side 
you can nothing will happen okay nothing will happen it won't poke your hand so you're not going to crush like this just hold it gently in the palm of the left hand okay this is called collecting collecting the suture needle and the thread okay so gently you are holding it you can gently close it is not going to poke your hand so leaving only what is necessary outside don't leave excess thread material here then it is difficult to do the knot so leave only what is essential don't leave like this just leave some amount and another rule is this is called rule of 3 from here you have to take the bite about 3 mm from the margin okay from the margin the entry should be 3 mm don't go very far away from the margin don't take the bite very close to the margin if you take bite very close to the margin you may tear the tissue you got the point so 3 mm away from the wound will be ideal wound. this is called rule of 3 and another point is when you are doing the neck suturing don't do the suturing very close to the first suture give your 3 mm space it is called this is also called rule of 3 so there should be minimum uh, 3 mm distance it can be more you can do the suturing even 5 mm away from the first suture nothing wrong in it but don't put the suture very 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 close it will disturb the blood supply okay so 3 mm away from the first suture and 3 mm away from the wound margin okay so collect the suture needle and the thread in your left hand okay okay so this thread should be loose now don't pull if you pull it will come out okay now we have to do something called throwing okay now we have to do the knot so to tie the knot you have to throw this is called first throw this is called second throw okay first throw second throw so in many ways you can do this one technique is hold the needle in the same place and throw like this move only your left hand one throw two throw okay this is one technique and another technique is hold the left hand steady move this right hand one two got it one throw two throw so there are two techniques right not moving right hand moving only the left hand okay and not moving the left hand moving only the okay. right hand but the good technique is move to both the hands one two one two okay one two i am moving both both the hands i am coming here see this hand also goes this hand also moves so i am moving both the hands okay some people what they will do they will hold like this then they will do like this okay so one two okay so when you are doing the throwing make sure the throw doesn't go beyond the hinge if it goes beyond the hinge then it may get stuck here if it goes beyond the hinge it may get stuck here then you may have difficulty in tying the knot okay so only in the tip even if it goes here no issues but make sure the throw is only between the tip and the hinge okay so don't do like this okay don't do like this okay two throws between the tip and the hinge and go and catch the other end of the thread don't catch here okay don't catch here catch the tip okay catch the tip then move the throws away from your needle holder okay make sure the knot falls on the either buckle or lingual not on the wound area 
so the knot should not fall on the mm. middle otherwise what will happen it may disturb the wound healing it will invite the block it will invite the bacteria the wound may get infected so make sure the knot is on the buckle aspect so when you are tying the knot make sure to give only minimum pressure if you exert too much of tying the knot tightly will blanch the tissue will compress the tissue will necrose the tissue okay the tissue may loss its blood supply delayed healing more pain more discomfort to the patient okay so only gentle okay only gentle just enough okay not too much pressure okay don't strangulate the tissue so first two throws we did in the clockwise direction there are various techniques of uh, knots so uh, we are not going to discuss deeply about the type of knot just two throws clockwise we did clockwise right second two throws anti clockwise okay and third throw clockwise this is enough don't worry about uh, the number of throws direction of throws by experience you will know it so first two throws clockwise second two throws anti clockwise final one throw to the clockwise one clockwise okay then how to cut it okay like this hold this end in one hand and hold this also in the same hand okay leave 3 mm and cut this is another rule of 3 leave 3 mm don't cut very close otherwise you will have difficulty in removing the suture if you cut with a lot of excess then it may irritate the soft tissue okay then it may irritate the patient tongue throat cheek okay so cut it only what is necessary okay so i will pick up everything okay enter at 90 degree rotation wrist rotation okay okay left hand clockwise to catch the tip okay you did the first throws then comes the secret okay if you do the second throwing anti clockwise when you are doing the second set of throws don't pull the thread the moment you pull the thread what happens here the knot the first throws become loosened have you seen after doing the suturing the suture will be loose after you finish the suturing the suture will be loose loose the mistake what the doctor must have done is giving pressure on the thread while doing the second set of throws so after doing the first set of throws when you are doing the second thread that is the anti clockwise keep the thread loose the moment you do like this here it becomes loosened then you will be wondering why the knot has become loosened okay so when you are doing the second thread keep the thread loose this is the key keep the thread loose don't pull and do like this so keep the thread loose and do the second set and go and catch the tip okay and go like this okay like this isn't it very simple yes okay practice more on pillows do 50 suture under suture on the suture okay with open eyes without opening the eyes with the closed eyes hmm practice 